Welcome back to Storage. I am your host, Libby Higgins, and guess what, MFers? We're back in the spot, baby. And it looks so dark. It's going to be fine, though. This is what we're going to do. We're not messing around. We're going to do it just like this. I don't care if if the camera's not recording or this is not recording because it's been too long since I was here with y'all. I was here with y'all in different capacities. I was with you on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, but I wasn't here through this medium. And I'm not going to explain myself a lot because it gets tiresome. But I just couldn't find the time whilst on tour to make this happen. That's all there is to it. It's not that I don't love you. It's not that I was ghosting you or broke up with you. It's simply because it couldn't happen. And that's sad. It makes me sad. You know what else makes me sad is... When I put any kind of lipstick on, it immediately rubs off my onto my flipper, and the flipper has turned to what can only be described as pink. I went from a flipper that was yellow-ish to a flipper that is now pink, and that's just so irritating. <laughs> Can't wear lipstick. It immediately rubs off on there. I don't know why. There's nothing I can do to prevent it. I got a lip stain so they could stain my lip to make it look like I was wearing a lipstick. And guess what? It still came off. Not looking for suggestions. Just letting you know why I have a pink tooth. I have a pink tooth. My tooth is pink. Today's beverage of choice is, of course, uh, Coke Zero. Still not drinking regular Coke. Maybe had one experience where I accidentally drank someone else's Coke that was in a cup and I didn't know and I tasted it. And my brain said, hey, yeah, we are back in business, baby. Give us that dopamine rush. And I told my brain, hey, calm down, brother. You got the wrong drink. I feel like that the camera's moving because I got the fan pointing there. <sighs> Drove up to the Dunkin' Donuts, which is just across the way here. You could walk if you were feeling energetic. Um, I pulled up to the drive-thru and the lady said, oh, please, pull up, please come in because our speaker's messed up. So I pull up to the little window and, and ask the little gentleman, did she say come inside? And he goes, yeah, our speaker's messed up. And I said, I'm too fat for that, sir. And started to drive away. He goes, we got you. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to make this a thing. I don't need a pumpkin spice latte or whatever I, I was going to get. Because I don't really go to Dunkin'. It was just there. And I was like, you know what? I could have a coffee right now. Like, I could have a coffee and feel good about it. Is it 5 p.m. on a Wednesday? Yeah. Am I elderly and you're not supposed to drink coffee after 5? Yeah. I don't follow rules. I do what I want to do. I want to drink a coffee from Dunkin' Donuts at 5 p.m. on a Wednesday. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Yeah, baby. <laughs> Not what I was looking for, but cool nonetheless. Tour has been going exceptionally, exceptionally well. Every show, almost every show, there was one or two where I was like, mm, I could have done better or the audience wasn't feeling me. These are all things that happen. Uh, but uh, for the most part, 
Wow. People are, people are incredible. People come out, cheer, laugh, have a good time. People don't get too drunk. Haven't seen a lot of inebriated uh, 50-year-old white women. Because I don't know what it is about 50-year-old white women. But they love getting tore up and drunk at a show and then start hollering. So we didn't have too many of those. There was a couple of shows where people were yelling out, and it's always very nice. I love you, blah, 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 whatever. I love it. Um, I feel like there was one where there was like kind of an actual heckle, but I don't remember. And obviously it had zero effect on me because I can't even remember. Did almost every meet and greet except uh, the one right before the last because the way that they have these set up and the way that the theaters were built in the 1800s and in the 1800s, people with physical disabilities or uh, what's it called? Um, What is it that I have? Physical disabilities or uh, limited mobility is what I was trying to think of. Didn't go to theaters. And you can tell that by the amount of stairs that are in these places. One place that we went to, which was absolutely beautiful, was in Newport, Rhode Island. Beautiful theater. Not ADA compliant. And I had to go up two flights of steps just to use the restroom. Do I get mad? Yes, I get mad. Do I get mad at the people that are running the venue? No, because they have no control over what was built in the 1800s. There weren't ADA laws then. If you were disabled, you sat your ass home. Unfortunately. (sighs) Two flights of steps to go to the bathroom. And you get up. I mean, you're walking up the oldest, creakiest steps that look like they were built probably around the time when Jesus was around. Get up there, the oldest bathroom that you've ever seen in your life. And I'm not talking shit on the people that own this theater. I want to make that clear. I'm talking shit on the fact that it's old. And that's what's great about historical places. They're old. That's why we keep them the way they were. And um, one of the special things that happened when we were in Newport, Rhode Island, of course, is that my friend, Chelsea's friend, our friend, and your friend, Billy Gilman, came to the show. Not only did he come to the show, but Billy was wearing... Tammy's merch that had Tammy's name on it, my name, Crystal's name on it, Jim, Diamond, and he walked in the door and said, hey, honeys, one voice here, and from that moment on, I was in love. I was already in love with Billy Gilman, let's be honest. I love Billy Gilman. Had a grand time. Anyway, we did a mukbang. If you didn't see it, go to my YouTube or Chelsea's YouTube We had uh, some really delicious food. Now, that delicious food didn't agree with my stomach, and I had to make uh, quite a few trips up and down the two two flights of stairs to use the little rickety bathroom. Shout out to rickety bathrooms, brothers. If you were to ask me, hey, what was your favorite city on the tour? It was hard. It's hard to say. Really enjoyed Toronto, but man, Newport, Rhode Island, there's something about that little town that looks like it's not even a real place. It looks like a set for a Hallmark movie. And I loved it. Pretty much every city. Buffalo was great. Um, We got to spend some time in Buffalo. Buffalo was cool. Columbus was cool. Um, 
Stroudsburg. I don't know what this little other little town was called. I mean, we went to so many states. And when I tell you we have a system, the system is as follows. Drive to the theater at 2 p.m. Beth, Tina, unload all the merch. Me and Chelsea unload our asses into a green room or a uh, hospitality room, whatever they're called. That's when we become we begin harshly judging the furniture in these dressing rooms. Eight out of ten of these dress I'm gonna I'm gonna say five out of ten on this run. Five out of ten of these dressing rooms uh, had simple uh, chairs like you'd see in I don't know maybe a food court at a mall. And Chelsea and I sit there a long time, so we start judging. Every piece of furniture. Oh, is that good? Oh, there's a couch. Cool. There's a couch, but it's also on the floor. And I can't get up. Um, While Chelsea, I'm sorry, while Beth and Tina are setting up the merch, Chelsea and I are doing things like watching 48 Hours. Winkler. Sis sent me a thing that said Winkler. We watched 48 Hours. We have been doing exercise programs in the green room. We have been um, sometimes sleeping because we have hours. Winkler, Winkler, Winkler. I don't know why she's Miss Winkler. Miss Mrs. Wiener. Wiener, hold on. I got to tell sis. Hi, hi, sis. I'm doing my podcast what the heck? It's writing it in Spanish. Oh, my God. Let me just go ahead and give Sis a quick call here. Does everybody love Sis? Yeah. I'm in the car with Uncle Tucky coming for a doctor's appointment. Oh, okay. Well, I was just in the middle of my podcast, and I wanted to tell you that I think her name was Miss Wiener. Oh, Wiener, that's right. Miss Wiener. Yes, but I had, I was close to her. Yes. For the, some reason, I just thought of Winkler. Well, when you said that, then it jogged my memory, and I thought, oh, Miss Wiener, because we always thought that was so... Man, we are really on top of it. We thought it was funny that her name was Wiener, dude. And I was trying to think of her um, son's name. It was like Ray or... It was like Rick Wiener. Rick. Yeah, Rick Wiener. Rick Wiener. Rick Wiener. Do you want to say hi to all your fans here on the podcast? Oh, hello, fans. Have a nice day. Get some rest. Do you have any shout-outs you wanted to give? Uh, let's see here. Let's give a shout-out to Marcy. Marcy. And uh, Miss Molly. Oh, Molly. And let's see here. Uh, I think that's it. Well, that'll do it today for those wonderful shout-outs, everyone. Please. Well, thank you very much. I'm running into second base, third base, third base. How many RBIs do you have today? I have 1,400 RBIs. Whoa! Wow! Well, I love you. Love you, sis. Bye-bye. 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 What a special treat to talk to sis. Um, she loves driving her husband to doctor's appointments. That's, there's a point when you get elderly or older that all you do apparently is go to doctor's appointments and, um, try to stay alive. <laughs> loves taking him to doctor's appointments. And the poor guy, I mean, he has a, a nerve condition. I can't remember what it's called. Some French thing. Um, He has a nerve condition where he has so much neuropathy that he can't feel really basically his hands and his feet. Then his leg got cut off. Now he's got a fake leg, and then he lost a lot of weight, so now he's got to go get a different fake leg. 
and my sister truly is one of those people where it's like, uh, you know, in good, in what is it called when you get married and they're like, in goodness and in health, or is it in badness? What is it? In sickness and in health. So she, she definitely is, uh, you know, taking on her role as the good wife because, you know, he needs help and she's helping. She's his caretaker, basically. Could I do it? I got time to be taking care of someone. <laughs> I can barely take care of myself. All right, back to the shows. Chelsea and I, uh, again, watch 48 Hours. We've been doing exercise programs. We have been doing um, sleeping. We've been editing. We've been really using our time wisely, which I'm proud of. And that is often a, a time last last um, leg of the tour where I could take my podcast stuff in and then do the podcast. Well, it just couldn't happen. I... I chose some self-care and some body movement over stressing about the podcast because honestly the 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 movement really really kept me going. And even one day, it was one of the last days, you know, I was hurting really really bad, but I knew that I needed to get my limbs moving. And Chelsea's like, "You want to do it?" And I was like, "I don't know, I'm hurting." Well, I, I did it sitting down. I did everything sitting down, and she did it standing up, and we, we did that thing, and it, we felt better after. And Chelsea has a little workout outfit that she wears, and it's so cute. And um, we're just having a good time, and we're thankful that we get to do this. Whoa. Whoa. Thankful that we're meeting so many wonderful people thankful for uh the people that spend their money come out as chelsea says you get a babysitter uh you buy tickets you splurge on tickets you drive there um sometimes you get hotel rooms sometimes you fly and we appreciate it we hope that the shows uh, are worth it to you i feel like they are i feel like everybody's having a good time have some people walked out five minutes into the show yeah because they didn't know how many times they were going to hear the word. And that's one thing about our shows. We're going to say the word a lot. Now, one woman, I looked down at her and every time I said something along the lines of, she looked at her husband and sort of like gasped. She gasped and was like, whoa. And I can't help it. I'm paying attention to what people are doing in the audience because I'm basing my self-worth on what I'm seeing in the audience. And I say, there's a lady in the front that looks like she doesn't know what she was getting into. And I said, did you know what you were going to see tonight? And she goes, mm-mm. And I, for some reason, I felt like I had to start explaining myself to her. I don't know why. Um because I was feeling like we were having a little connect connection in that moment. And I wanted her to understand that there is a double standard in comedy with men and women. And I've said this a million times. but um, And there's also a double, double standard in real life uh, about what women and men can say. Well, it's very hard to get booked if you're a dirty comic or whatever, blue and I wanted that lady to understand the reason why we say those things is because we can. And no one's going to tell Chelsea, hey, uh, we're not going to book you because you're saying too many dirty words. Nobody's going to tell Chelsea that right now. Chelsea's on top of the freaking world and taking over the world. You think they're going to tell her, hey, you need to tone it down, you and your, your little comics? No. So that's why we say it. We say uh, a kind of vulgar things we say um certain words we talk about certain issues because we can and it's very important and you might say well, what's so important about saying the word it's not it it doesn't even have to be said it's just the fact that we can say it 
And I think my my thing with saying stuff where I feel like I'm speaking a truth is to show other women like you don't have to listen to what people say and you can say what you want. It doesn't make you any less feminine, doesn't make you any less um I don't even know what the words are. I just think that women should be able to say whatever they want about whatever they want. That's just me. <laughs> and I'm going to get off my soap box. Um, and I feel like after that, she kind of loosened up a little bit. And by the time Chelsea was on stage, she, she was having a good time. So maybe she's one of these women who's been told like, nice women don't say the word. <laughs> maybe she felt scared. Maybe she was scared to let go. Like, is it okay for me to laugh at this? Is my husband going to judge me? Well, by the end of it, those two were having a good time. There's also the possibility that when I asked this lady, "Do you did you know what you're getting into? She might have been scared and just said no, kind of to roast me. But maybe she was one of Tammy's biggest fans. I don't know. I was creating this whole thing in my head, thinking I'm like doing this motivational speech up on the stage, you know, speaking up for women's rights. And really, she was just like, she wasn't, she could have cared less. What a blessing is. What a blessing, though, traveling the country and, um, oh, stop. Okay, let me, let me reset. So after they load in, me and Chelsea do our stuff. Then we have a sound check at about, I don't know, between anywhere between 4 and 5.30. We do a sound check. It includes a complete run of the show, meaning um, lights, music, everything. We don't do our sets, our whole set, um, but we do go up there and say, hey, how do I sound? This is what happens at the end of my set. That's when you need to play the video, blah, blah, blah. Do the sound check. Then that's when I go back downstairs. I begin getting ready, putting makeup on, uh, fixing my hair, getting dressed into my show clothing. Chelsea will sign hats or, you know, get the VIPs in order or, you know, she's working, nonstop working. Then the show starts. After the show is done, we do the meet and greet. Uh, and after that's done, we generally drive back to the hotel. Uh, not back to the hotel. We drive to a hotel where we will stay a very short time. Um, I, I have my own little routine, too, in the hotel, and I think we all do. I... Uh, come in, I open my suitcase, get my CPAP out, get my electric blanket out because Chelsea likes it 50 below zero, um, get my toiletries out, wash my face, do that, hop in the bed. Sometimes, most nights, I will um, do all that, go downstairs, talk to Harold for a while because I don't want to disturb Chelsea, and then we fall asleep and wake up and literally drive to the next city. And to tell you, I tell you what, driving around in the East Coast in the fall, whoo wee! Now I see what all the hype's about when people say, "Oh, you gotta go see the fall foliage in the East." Okay, I see it. And they said this year it wasn't even as good as it has been. Woo! Trees of beautiful colors. As we're driving during the day, often um, Tina and Beth will switch up driving. They're, they're the big daytime drivers. I'm a gal that drives at night. So if we're leaving a, a venue at night and we have to make maybe a two to three hour drive to another city so that we don't have such a big drive in the morning, that's me. When it hits eight, nine o'clock, I'm awake and I'm ready for action and I'm ready to drive and I'm not falling asleep. And that's guaranteed. We'll stop at gas stations. We've been making good choices. Uh, I've been making better choices at the gas stations. I won't immediately go for a honey bun or a um, Swiss roll, a pecan roll. I'll choose something like a cheese stick or a boiled egg or, um, you know, something, a, a nice protein bar. I'm trying to keep this body going because as a 50-year-old woman with an already 
disabling condition called lipedema. It's hard. But I think I'm doing pretty good. And I'm going to say I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of all of us. I'm proud of me, Chelsea, Tina, and Beth. We all are hardworking women. And honestly, we're doing that thing. We're doing it. We don't have a, a we don't have a, a crew of people that are like, okay, you guys are gonna go here, there, and everywhere. No, we go in, Chelsea tells them how to do the stuff, or Tina tells them, you know, this is the run through of the show. Beth has has the merch. Like every everything is we're doing it. And we're doing it well and it's getting done. And I believe people are happy. People are loving it. Once upon a time, I had the voicemail, I would listen to them. Once upon a time, I'd open my phone and listen to them again. Voicemail, voicemail, it's time for the voicemail. God, that song is a banger. That song is a banger. Let's listen to it again. Once upon a time, I had the voicemail, I would listen to them. Once upon a time, I'd open my phone and listen to them again. Voicemail, voicemail, it's time for the voicemail. I think in a pre- previous life, I was maybe an Irish woman. And um, maybe I went down to the pub with my little Irish guitar or my lute or what other instruments they had back in the day. And I think I made up songs in the pub. Or the tavern. Come on down to the tavern. Now, that accent is not Irish. I don't know how to speak it with an Irish accent. But I think it would be cool if that really was one of my previous lives. An Irish songwriter, tavern player, maybe an Irish cover band. I don't know who I would have been covering back in the day. Oh, I'm going to play old Ian songs that he used to play many years ago. And it was just... Ian up the street who every once in a while played a little lute. That's an Irish cover band. I would like to dive into some of these voicemails. As usual, haven't... Um, let me go back here. Ooh, suspected spam. Wow. Oh, let's check that out. Don't say a bad word. Yep, you were right. That is, and this one is also suspected spam from an eight one four number. Hi, so I just wanted to remind you that if you repeat the same thing out loud twenty eight times, you will remember it for the rest of your life. And as our was were be deemed in half as had be that did can could shall will would may might must. Now we did listen. To th- we did listen to this before because I remember, and people were telling me in the comments what he was saying, and I can't remember what it was. Alrighty, this is a four two five number, folks. We're going in here and listen to this right away. Hi, honey. This is Blythe. I just wanted to let you know that there's this period after you call the podcast. This period where the phone just is ringing and trilling, and that's when you forget everything that you were going to say. Um, That being said, (laughs) I just love you. I thought you'd think this funny. If you pull up the keypad, right, while you're leaving a voicemail, and then you pretend to say, pretend you pretend to say a bad word, like. And then you get a number and it bleeps it for you. Isn't that so cool? So <laughs> Okay. Last thing I have to tell you is that I have storage in my contacts. Oh my god. Um my phone contacts so that I can just call. After every episode I just leave a little voice. No, I never had it played or anything, but that's okay. I know you're busy with Feeding skeletal crystal and everything. So busy. Okay, love. Yeah. Bye. Oh 
Holy mackerel. That person sounded so cute. I want to see what this area code is. 425 area code. Wow, completely spared area code wrong. Um, Seattle, wow. Well, friend, I want to tell you, if you're in Seattle, I couldn't hear what your name was. It, the transcript said, hi, honey, this is Life. So we're just going to call you Life. We are coming to Seattle soon. Um, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Phone, not phone, camera got too hot. I'm so tired of buying all this expensive equipment and it's not working. Ugh, irritated. Anyway, what I was saying is if you're in Seattle or the West Coast, go to eatmytrash.com where Chelsea has her tickets on sale and come see us. Seattle, we have Seattle, Portland, Sacramento, San Luis Apso. I don't know how to say that one. Um, somewhere in Nevada. Somewhere in Utah. <sighs> Don't know all these places. Alrighty. Um, somebody wants some advice here from the 804. Hey, Libby, it's Brooke. Hi, Brooke. And I'm calling to see if you think I'm the asshole or not. Well, we went on vacation with my my first ever family vacation, and I'm 33 now. We went last year, and, um, you know, it's all organized, all that. My brother and his girlfriend went with us, and we had some difficulties getting along. Oh. So then we went to plan our next year's vacation afterwards, and he blew up and said, I don't, we have different standards than y'all because we didn't, we couldn't all afford to pay for the extremely expensive place they wanted to stay at. And um, there had been one rotten review on the really nice place that we found, but I had reached out to the Airbnb host and everything, and he said, you know, that was just one person and that everything has been totally dealt with and all of the others were, other reviews were gleaming, right? So anyway, um, he says, I don't want to go on vacation with y'all ever again. I don't even want to come to holidays. So now, fast forward, about a year, because we started planning it right after last year's vacation, I'm planning a vacation for all the rest of the family to go next year, and I'm not inviting him. So I'm going to tell him about it, but I'm going to say you guys can get a house nearby if you want, but we're booking this one without y'all. <laughs> and you're welcome to get an Airbnb or whatever nearby and come and visit with us but we don't want to stay with you again because they, he was a terror. He was a fucking terrorist. Oh, so, sorry about the cursing. He was a freaking terrorist to us when we were all there. Like he was trying to make all the women cook clean and go do the grocery shopping. And we all like, I made a bunch of food in advance and brought stuff with me because we wanted to freaking relax. And, uh, he wanted to like, Women in the kitchen, men over here chilling, and it was not fun. He wanted to be the one who picked everything we did. And they also have four boxers who are very young, beautiful, sweet dogs, but a lot of work and energy and constantly like, get down, don't do this, don't do that. And it fucking, it freaking sucked. Get down. Go to sleep. Tell me what you think. Oh. What would you do? Am I the asshole? Love you. Bye. Okay, Brooke. First of all, I'm just going to say right off the bat, and of course, this is my personal opinion. This is not based on any kind of fact. Um, I, w I wouldn't want to go with them anywhere again either. Uh, with the expectation like, oh, the women should be doing this, that, and everything. When I'm on vacation, when I'm on vacation, I'm on vacation. I'm not uh, cleaning for two with around anyone now <sighs> it's hard to say here's the deal because someone does have to do that stuff why can't it be um everybody pitch in and pick up at yourself maybe one night so and so your uh brother frank can cook on tuesdays or maybe even frank doesn't want to cook maybe frank can go to the grocery store and get all the ingredients Maybe Frank can then clean up after somebody cooks. 
I'm just not down with going on a vacation where you have to work the whole time. And if your brother and his girlfriend and their four dogs cause you more work, absolutely have them be next door. Because the purpose of a vacation is to recharge, refresh, refresh, and relax. Not listen to your brother telling you to get in the kitchen and make a freaking sandwich. This is 2023, folks. This is in 1993. When my dad and mom took us on vacations, they always had to cook and clean. And man, it sucked. Even as a kid, I could be like, man, it sucks that my dad has to cook all this food and do all this for us. But, you know, I guess that was their job as parents. But if I'm going with someone who is the same age as me and we're at this place together, we're all going to pitch in. Yeah, you're, I, I really don't believe you're being an asshole. And the thing is, is if family members become uh, toxic, irritating, annoying, you don't have an obligation to do what they want just because they're family. Now, granted, when I go somewhere with sis, sis will wait on me hand and foot. That's what sis likes to do. Sis is a uh, mother hen. And if you look deeper into why sis wants to do that, it's probably some kind of feelings of inadequacy. Because I will find myself doing the same thing like that for people that I love. And maybe maybe I want to get their approval. Um, but man, fuck your mother. God. And I think... At, other people would chime in and say, yeah, that doesn't sound like a fun vacation. And if he wants to come come over for holidays, cool. Bring a dish. Bring a souffle, Frank. Bring a game, green bean casserole. Bring some plates. Women aren't here to serve you, brother. Who do you think you are? The king of England? Who do you think you are? Napoleon Bonaparte from France? Who do you think you are? The President of the United States, bro? You're not. Because as far as I know, the President of the United States, his name is Joe Biden, and he is sleeping and falling down a lot. Falling down a lot. The camera's moving because I got that fan just blowing on it. Let me look closer. I don't even care. I just don't want it to overheat. Why would you make a camera that films in 4K, but you can only film in it for a few minutes? Huh, Sony? Sony, tell me that. Why would you make a vlogging camera that only records in 4K for about five minutes before it overheats? I have to turn off the overheat feature, and it goes way beyond where it's supposed to. Because somebody named Sony made a vlogging camera that doesn't record on 4K for longer than five minutes. When you're vlogging, you're not vlogging uh, just two or three clips at a time. You could be recording more, more than five minutes. Sony. What I'm going to do in the future is pay more attention to reviews because that's one thing I don't do. I see a product, I'll look at maybe one or two reviews, which are probably spam bots that are fake or paid reviews. And I'll be like, oh, that seems trustworthy. And then I get it and start watching YouTube videos. It's like, yeah, you can't record over five minutes in 4K. Then don't put 4K on the camera. Don't know how it works. You got my money. It's too late for me to take it back. And additionally, not only did you get my money, but then I bought another camera almost just like it for my guest. Oh, my God. I am amped. Brooke got me amped. Uh Uh-oh. This says I I was just trying to make a note, opinion, or whatever. Oh, no. She might be talking shit to me. Hey, Libby. Um, I was just trying to make a note 
or opinion or whatever that any episode, um, video, mukbang, um, podcast that includes you and Harry, like you can see, you can feel, you can hear the chemistry and the connection and your guys' looks at each other, the way you talk to each other, uh, the way you move around each other even. It's so energetically just pleasing. Like you guys are great for each other. If I may, uh, if I may say. Um, also, I have a three foot skeleton that I keep in my front seat all the time Aww. to honor Crystal the Skeleton. I will see you Columbus fuck. I will see you on <laughs> October 8th in Columbus. Damn and it. I cannot wait. So, cannot wait. I don't know if I got Bye. to meet you or not. I hope I got to meet you. I don't know if I did. Um, man, Columbus, Ohio. Wow. I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry I didn't listen to this before the show. I'll let Skeletal Crystal know that you have a skeleton in your car to honor her. And she will be so pleased that she will um, just sit there like this. Because that's all Crystal Skeleton can, Crystal, Skeletal Crystal can do. She can't do anything more than that. And thank you for saying those nice things about me and Harry. Um there is no denying that Harry and I have a good energy together. I really feel like we bring out a good positive energy from each other. Um, I definitely, uh, like, uh, God, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to sound cheesy, but I, I really like spending time with him. I feel like he really brings out the best in me and I feel like I bring out the best in him. A lot of the times, and we have a good time, and we enjoy each other's company. That sounded very elderly. We enjoy each other's company. Ooh, we're elderly. Um, so thank you for saying that. That was nice. I really do feel like we have a good chemistry, and we have fun, and I have a lot of videos to work on. <laughs> I have a lot of videos to work on. I have the Stanley video. I have the modeling Goodwill video. I have a video where we drove around the animal park. I have the zoo. I have so many videos to edit. Now, on the Patreon coming up in the next couple of days, I'm going to have the vlog from the first part of the tour. Um, I, I decided to put that Patreon only because I really have not been putting a lot on my Patreon. So... If you're not a Patreon, get on there. Um, been trying to keep up with stuff on there. Um, I think there are affordable tiers. There's a $5 tier, which is just a tip jar. Most times, it's just a tip jar. You don't get to see extra content. Sometimes if I'm feeling sassy, I'll be like, ooh, let me include this $5 tier in here. Um, yeah, that's, that's what's going on with that. Um... I'm trying to think what kind of things. I mean, if you watch my vlog and you watch Chelsea's vlog, it's kind of the same. Like, we're together, so it's kind of the same thing. Um, I did not include the video of when Tina uh, was dared $500 to just give one lick to Chelsea's <laughs> Because, I mean, you don't need to see that on my vlog. And anyway, like, my camera was facing Chelsea and there was nudity and it's like i'm not gonna sit here and put squares over every long you know what it would take too long i tried it and it was taking too long and it every time somebody moved then a, a tit was exposed and it was just too much but just mostly the goings going ons uh of tour life a kind of behind the scenes if you will a kind of behind the mask if you will it's kind of on the other side of the wall if you will it's kind of in the envelope kind of uh, behind the mask i got two more voicemails that are recent and that's all that i have that's recent so we're going to catch up on those this is four three six i'm sorry four six three yeah hey honey it's me here oh honey I just saw you last night in Wabash, and oh my god, 
You killed it. Stop. Oh my god. Oh my god. I I cannot stop thinking about some of your jokes. And there's one that's gonna live in my head rent free. I'm not gonna ruin it. I'm not gonna say it, but let's just say it involves restaurants. I know what I know you'll know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> that's <laughs> It's, it, I, I can never drive past that uh, restaurant again without thinking of you. Me. That's what I want. I wish I could have done the meet and greet so I could have gotten to tell you just how awesome you are. And I wanted to let you know that, like, my mom, uh, she passed away in 2021, and she absolutely loved you. Like, she thought you were the best. Like, to be honest, she said, I like her more than Chelsea. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa. I was like, whoa. I was like, that's, <laughs> that's big. I was like, that's big, because I know everybody's always loving Chelsea, but Livy, you're amazing. You are seriously the best. And I absolutely love your stuff. Every- I had to stop it because I just heard like six gunshots. Let's keep going. Everything you do, and honestly, it just reminds me of my mom because I knew how much she enjoyed your uh, your comedy as well. But, honey, thanks for the awesome night. I love you. Bye bye. Love you, honey. Thanks for calling. Um, is there a shooting range? That was rapid fire shooting. I don't know if you could hear. It was bang, bang, bang. Honey, thanks for calling. Um, you were at the Wabash show. Wabash, uh, which I kept wanting to say not the right way to say it. Wabash. That was another theater now I'm remembering. The theater there was really, really cool. And I remember that being a good show. And thank you for th- saying all the nice things. And um, I'm sorry to hear about your mom passing away. And I'm glad to hear that she was a fan. And um, that's okay if she liked me. You know, you're not supposed to pick favorites, but sometimes people pick favorites and that's okay. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's somebody else, and that's okay. <sighs> um, I'm scared, honey. It's all those gunshots. There's not a shooting range around here. Why would somebody need to be shooting military-grade uh all artillery. What if there's a man on the loose and I'm in the storage space and I, this is it folks. This maybe this is it. Maybe this is what's happening because I constantly talk about it. Um, the apocalypse. And now I have to live in my storage space forever and there's no food in here. I have one Coke zero left And that's it. What do I do? (laughs) I mean, I got blankets in here. I got skeletal crystal. I have a heater until all electricity goes out. I, I could potentially be safe in here. And if I moved everything to the side, I could bring my car in here, sleep in the car. I think I'd be good. But I don't want to have to do that. So I was at the Columbus um, Bernie Sanders Mitten Security Guard show, (laughs) and the only thing that keeps playing in my mind on repeat is when you came out on stage and you leaned over that stool. Oh, my. Beep. (laughs) I. uh, Oh, my. Whoa. (sighs) Libby. You are just as beautiful in person as you are Stop. online. And uh, I'm going to start every single day by oh. thinking of you leaning over on that stool. Oh, wow. I'm just saying. I got a picture with you, and it's my wallpaper. I promise I'm not a fan. But, oh. <laughs> oh. You nutting? That's funny because sometimes when I come out in the audience, I can feel they're really like 
happy and cool. I start feeling a little sassy. And and what I do when I come out on stage, whatever side the, the stool is on, I will pick it up from that side and move it to the other. And it's kind of a move that comedian Greg Warren taught me. And it's kind of a way to tell the audience, like, I'm getting set up. This is my stuff. This is my time now. And I'm going to put this here. It's kind of like a power move, right? So sometimes when I'll set that stool down, if I'm feeling extra sassy, I'll do a little lean over like this. And give the people kind of like a little, like a little, little side side profile of that booty cheek, you know? And I think it's cool that this person was able to recognize that I was trying to give off a sexy vibe. Because that's what I'm doing. I'm not trying to give off a... um. I'm not, I'm, I'm only trying to get off, I'll give off sexy vibes. And when I bend over and I'm doing that little sexy look, but then I, I trick them, I lean up and kind of give it a laugh. Like (laughs) I wasn't trying to be sexy. I was just being silly, but really I was being sexy. And I'm glad you were able to recognize that. And I'm glad we got to meet and take a picture. That show though. Oh my God. If you were at that show, um, The security guard, and you'll see it on my vlog, the security guard would not break. And that's one of the things that Chelsea and I like to do. We love to get a security guard to break and laugh because they're not really supposed to. They're just kind of supposed to stand there, look around the land, make sure everything's okay. Um, I couldn't get him. I tried my damnedest. I couldn't even get a smirk. Well, Chelsea came on and said something and... um, about him or to him or something and he didn't break and Chelsea broke Chelsea broke and her and the audience laughed for about seven minutes straight and every time Chelsea would try to stop laughing she would um start up again and I missed it because I was backstage I could kind of hear it but I didn't really understand what was going on um but to have somebody break for seven minutes during a comedy show is a gift that 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 audience received that no one else is going to be able to get because that was like a a once-in-a-lifetime beautiful gift that happened between her, the audience, and that security guard. Now, talking to the security guard after, I was scared to death because I thought he was going to be like, you mother effers. Nope. Just a cool guy, takes his job very seriously, and is good at it. And he said he had some laughs inside. He goes, but I'm not going to show it. Just a cool guy all around. Can't wait for you to see that vlog because he, he, <laughs> I mean, this, this guy was like an iron fortress. I don't care what joke you said. You tell him a Jerry Seinfeld joke, he's not going to laugh. You tell him something from Family Guy, he's not going to laugh. You say a joke from, uh, you know, Chris Rock set, he's not going to laugh. He's a fortress. That's why I want to say, good job, security guard. You did a great job protecting us, yeah. You didn't break or smile or laugh or nothing the whole time, yeah. You are my hero. And I salute to you today, 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 yeah. I'm sorry if you missed that magical moment. I missed it too. I was backstage. But for the people that saw it, oh, God. And apparently Beth saw it too. She was in the audience. And every time Chelsea would look over and see Beth, she would lose it again. (laughs) That was a special night. All right, everyone, it's time for me to get out of here, folks, Uh, before this camera fucking shuts down again. And also, I want to take my pink flipper out, and I'm hungry, and that's it. So do what you need to do to get through your day and do it good. That's my new saying. Just made it up. Do what you need to do to get through the day and do it. And if if that's not inspiring to you, then nothing is inspiring because that really was the most inspiring thing that was ever recorded in human, recent modern human history. 
Also, I've been seeing people at the show with the um, need any goat shirts. What? Makes me so happy. Thank you. I love you. But that'll be it for today's show, folks. We're heading out here and I'm going to start here with no RBIs. And may you do your thing. Do I look creepy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.